This video is sponsored by our Ultimate Vegan Cooking Course. Learn the basics of how to cook without recipes and the fundamentals of plant-based cooking. It's currently 50% off. Link down below to learn more. Yo dudes! Welcome to Creamy Broccoli Pie. This is creamy, this is crispy, this is comforting, and this is so delicious. It's actually surprisingly low in fat considering this puff pastry. Easy to make. First step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blind bake our puff pastry. So we're using store-bought puff pastry. You'll be able to find vegan puff pastry in most supermarkets, frozen or unfrozen. Uh, just make sure obviously it's thawed. So blind bake simply means that we're gonna cook it so that it's sealed, so it can hold a moisture without it going soggy. So just roll out your sheet of puff pastry so that you make sure it can go up the sides of your baking tray. So this one here now, I've made it like a lovely square. It looks great. I'm gonna pop it into my baking tray and just bring it up the edges. So just be careful here. You wanna make sure your pastry doesn't crack and fit it really right into the corners. I've lined it with baking parchment so I can pull it out easier. It just makes it a nice centerpiece, but most people are happy just to serve it in its tray. If you do wanna take it out so you can just show the full gamut of pastry, um, I've put baking parchment just to pull it out afterwards. So don't forget to cut around the edges and just make sure to leave room to put the lid on. Um, so I just filled a few little cracks just with some extra pastry. Just go back to your childhood days when you used to play with Play-Doh. I know we used to love playing with Play-Doh. Just fill in the cracks. Time to blind bake it. So what I do is I take a sheet of baking parchment with some beans on top. I'm gonna pop that in on top like this. Just spread it around. What this does is it just stops it puffing up too much and it means we're gonna be left with a nice even pastry. So I'm gonna bake that for 10 to 15 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. So while our pastry is in blind baking, it's time to prepare our veg. So we're gonna use leek as the base of it. Leek are so sweet, so succulent and so underrated. So we're using leek, celeriac and broccoli. Just make sure with leek to chop it finely. Include the greens of the leek and just give it a good rinse because often there's sediment in that. So we've got a wide non-stick uh, pan. We've got this nice and warm, putting a tablespoon of oil in and we're gonna start just by sauteing our leek down. With the leek, the green of the leek can be a little fibrous, so by adding a generous pinch of, I'm using coarse sea salt here, it'll just help break down that kind of firm fibrous structure and it'll just make it kind of saute and just release its ju juicy, sweet succulents. Okay, now we're gonna chop the rest of our veg. We are using celeriac, which is the base of celery. It's starchy like potato with a slight celery undertone. If you can't get celeriac, just use potato. So that's 400 grams of celeriac, 400 grams of broccoli, 400 grams of leek. Try to chop it small, even sized pieces, kind of all homogenous. It just means it's gonna cook more evenly and it means within each bite, you might get a little bit of broccoli, a little bit of celeriac and a little bit of leek. Give it a nice mix around, add in a generous coarse pinch of sea salt. What that's gonna do is that it's gonna encourage all its veg to release more its moisture. Take a lid, pop a lid on top, and we're gonna do what's known as sweating the veg. So allowing it to kind of cook in its own juices. It's on a medium heat, we're gonna let this happen for about 10 to 15 minutes, giving it an occasional to stir just until it's soft, it's succulent, and it's ready to go. Okay, time to take our puff pastry out of the oven while this is sweating. So we're just gonna take the beans off just to allow any inherent moisture that's in the pastry just to evaporate so the pastry doesn't get soggy. Okay, time to make our bechamel. Basis of a bechamel is a roux, that's R-O-U-X. We're gonna go with four tablespoons of oil and sift in four tablespoons of white flour. We're gonna take a whisk, mix that together and just cook it off on a low heat for a minute or two. What we're trying to do is cook off that raw flour taste and just brown it ever so slightly. I'm gonna add in 700 ml of oat milk. You can use soy milk, rice milk, any milk of choice, so slowly add it in, continuing to whisk all the time, just to ensure the roux fully dissolves throughout the milk. Once this is in and look a nice time to add in our spices, so I've got one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, a pinch of black pepper, one bay leaf, and a generous pinch of salt. Okay, so our bechamel has cooked off nicely. I'm allowing some of the moisture evaporate just to concentrate and reduce the flavors. It's kind of reached a nice, just to show you the texture here, it's thick, but it's still nice and runny. I'm gonna turn that off the heat. I'm very happy with that texture. We're gonna zest in half a lemon, juice of half a lemon, and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Okay, time to bring our dish together. So, things to note, once our veg has sweated, the easiest way to know that it's complete is that your celeriac should be soft, should be creamy, and should be fully cooked. Bechamel, just to show you the texture, it's still quite runny, but I kind of want it like that because it just, otherwise it won't disperse throughout the sauce enough. 
So I'm gonna remove the bay leaf, I'm gonna pour in the sauce and on top of my veg. Last and final thing we're gonna do just before we assemble this is just to make sure to taste it. Really important thing as a chef is to season your dish all the way through. So I just wanna check in, see how the sauce with the leek and a bit of celery, how that tastes, because in essence, this is my end filling. Mm. I'm gonna give it a nice pinch of salt. I like a fair bit of salt, but it's beautiful. Really flavorful, nice bang of lemon coming through. Okay, time to bring it together. So I'm gonna put in my sauce and we're gonna put the lid of pastry on top. Oh, this just looks so good. My mouth is just filled with that flavor. It was glorious. This is a really nice, hearty, winter, family warming dinner. It's easier just to chop your pastry to size before you put it up. It's just gonna make it easier. And take a fork, and just what we're trying to do here is just to really compress the edges so it seals our pie. Last and final thing, take a pastry brush and we're just gonna brush the top. It just helps it go more golden. Brush it with oat milk if you'd prefer, but if you do go with a little bit of oil, it's slightly bit more indulgent, your choice. So I'm gonna bake this for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's golden and crispy on the top at 200 degrees Celsius. Our pastry's been cooking in the oven for 15 minutes, smells amazing, it's gone wonderfully golden, time to take it out. This looks fabulous, it smells magnificent. I kind of quite like the burnt bits. Obviously, burnt bits just cut them off. I know my kids won't like them. Now, for the moment of truth, to sew you our beautiful pie. Serrated knife is always much easier to use when cutting cuff puff pastry. Old school would be just to take a spoon and go straight at it, but I'm gonna try to just see how this serves. This looks fabulous. I love the way it's kind of gooing out, looks super rustic. Perfect compliment to have look, ready, ready to hear this? That crispy pastry, that soft, creamy filling. I am totally salivating. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's just beautiful, like, it's crispy, it's creamy, it's soft, there's the lemon zest coming through, nice undercarriage of mustard. It just, there's something really nourishing and fabulous. This is so tasty. Um, Hope you enjoyed as much as we do. Thank you for watching. We have a new book out at LinkedIn below and do check out our courses. Thanks Mel for watching. Wishing you loads of uh, health, happiness and joy. Cheers.